So now we are back. Had to take a little break for a second, but just to keep your head in the game, I had to punish him off camera. I didn't want you to see it because when you make five or six K in a month, be grateful, okay? Even though I know you want the 50 K months. Mm -hmm. So what happened? So you're studying, you're back to five or six K per month. Boo hoo, poor Jack. How did you, how did you uh, adapt? After okay, that? so this is where, once again, the conference was a difference maker. You asked me to make a presentation yeah. and I was like, okay, I'm gonna make a presentation. And I made my presentation and I had gotten so far off my process throughout, um, like throughout those five, to six months because nothing was working. So I was like, I was changing everything. But then when I got back to my process, I was reviewing my best trades, AOYI, uh, VYST, SHIMP. And I was like, I'm like not doing anything. And like the stuff that I wanted to teach, like why wouldn't I be following that? So like this was also like really nerve wracking for me because I'm not a public speaker. I never really was, but. You're doing uh, great. You're yeah. getting better every time. Yeah, and like to go up in front of like all those people kind of when I was still feeling like a loser a little bit, it was kind of nerve wracking, but I did it. And the conference really was a difference maker. And that's where I met my girlfriend who, um, she was really good for me just because um, like I was just around boys in Michigan and like kind of just like depressed with no like family or friends, like no girls for like, no girls for the, this entire like journey so far, like yeah. zero girls. Yeah. So <laughs> I met her and it was just nice to talk to a girl for a little bit. Yeah. And this was when I was moving back um, to Connecticut and like, we'll get into like another uh, video with like me and her to explain like that kind of journey. But yeah. I met her, I, I did the Click presentation. Click the link below, we're gonna have that video so that you can understand the softer side of Jack too, not mm -hmm. just bamboo pillows. <laughs> so I did that and then this is September and then I, I had to tell Dom, because Dom thought I was gonna renew and like stay longer in Michigan. I was just like, dude, I can't do it. Later. But let's get back to this conference for a second because I think this is an important lesson where, you know, I asked you to talk about, you know, your journey, why? What did I say? be good for the newbies correct everyone goes through their own journey i want you learning from his journey just like learning from my journey or tim gratani's journey or mark crooks or roland's journey or you know matt monaco or kyle williams like kyle and you know matt just came up kind of with you like you guys are all you know new six-figure students yeah this is the journey because it's so easy to get off your game um, it's easy to get the wrong perspective. It's easy to get depressed. It's easy to get lonely. A lot of this is mental. So sharing really helps. And as Jack said, I want to, you know, really accentuate this point when he shared at the conference, even though it was nerve wracking, even though, you know, he wasn't used to public speaking when you were, when you were researching for your presentation, you started to see what you were best at. Right. Mm -hmm. So like even just him researching to prepare his presentation helped him see, helped him refocus. Mm -hmm. Like if you weren't preparing for that presentation, you would still probably be depressed. Like you wouldn't, you didn't remember the good stuff mm -hmm. because you had five or six months of bad stuff. Mm -hmm. And like reviewing your trades, yeah. your good and your bad, understanding what's good and understanding what works best helps you stay on your game. Do you agree with that? Yeah, I would say after that, like I got, I got away from Michigan. Like I moved back home and like I started seeing my, my friends again and um, I just kind of got like super humble after the conference and like I went back to just a hundred dollar risk in um, October, November, and December. And the thing is, is like I was risking a hundred, whereas like um, before- Just explain that for a second. You're risking a hundred dollars per trade. Mm -hmm. Risking a hundred. So on a trade, if your loss is 120, you cut it. Mm -hmm. okay. So I, I got- Just want to be clear. With a hundred, with a hundred K account, over a hundred K account, I went back to a hundred dollar risk, which was less than I even started with in the beginning. And I just wanted to get back to like the process and like focusing on good trades. And so you got ultra conservative. I got ultra conservative. All I wanted to get was my process back, some confidence. And I started to, started to string some get together. Like the market picked up a little bit. I started to like string together some trades, some, some uh, stocks started running. This is kind of when COVID started a little bit. Um, early 2020 and your overall profit is still mind you through all of this you know struggle studying dedication ups downs perspective moves you've made what like a hundred thousand 150 thousand yeah uh, I would say like a hundred I mean I, I deleted my profitly after like um, 
like the first half of 2018, but just because I needed the restart, I needed to not think about it. Yeah. So like it's my profit is actually like 20 or 30 K or not 20. It's probably like 15 K less than what uh, I actually would have. So you deleted used. your profit after you had made 15 grand. You just wanted to like a fresh start after I'd lost 15 grand. Okay, cool. Yeah. yeah. So that's why um, it starts what my first trade back. Like you can look at it like it was in July of 2018. So anyway, um, yeah, I was up maybe like 130K, 120K, um, and I got my process back, and I, I was back home, and I was talking to the girlfriend, every, or not the girlfriend, the friend at the time. You were friend-zoned. I was friend-zoned, and just like, no, talking to her, like, like her, spirits. like, if you guys haven't seen, like, she made a video with Tim, so, like, check that out, and just, like, her conservative and just, like, rational mindset, like, being around Dom all the time was kind of, like, like very like emotional like up and down and like like a little crazy like I needed like something that was like consistent and she was like super consistent and like that that transferred into my life behind every great man is usually a great woman mm -hmm. FYI it's true so it was just like the consistency and just like her lifestyle just like really played a, a role and just like because then I just started like talking to her every day and like that was like my main focus on the person I talked to and like me and Dom kind of like like had a breakup kind of, but we, we still talk now and we're like, we're back at it and he's doing really well in this market too. And um, still love the kid at the end of the day because he was the first one that really like helped me. And Dom um, FYI is like around 700,000 from mm -hmm. what I understand, which mm -hmm. is crazy. Yep. So then basically, um, so that's towards the end of the year and I started doing good. And then I made like 30K from after the conference to the end of the year with a hundred dollar risk with my average gain being 300 average loss 100 how did you get that back starting small again and building myself back up and Going then back to the basics okay this is so in november i also have to talk about this because this was like this was the start of 2020 um i shorted the pump rivx uh i started shorting it at four bucks i i added more like along the way my average was 550 um, and at this point too, like after you have to understand at the conference, it was me, it was me, Dom, Kyle and Matt Monaco when Matt Monaco was worth, when Matt Monaco had made nothing, right? Matt Monaco had nothing. He was with us and he's like, in now, college and now he like is, is like one of us really. And Matt is closing in on 600 or 700,000 now, 600,000 Matt's at 600, Kyle's at 750, Dom's at 700 and you're closing in on 1.7 million mm -hmm. just to Fast forward, this was what, last November you're talking about? This, this was, was like, last September at the conference. But no, but you started saying last November something happened. Okay, yeah, last November. Um, 13 months ago as of when we're filming this. Yeah, so this is when, like, also, like, I noticed with Kyle, like, Kyle is also kind of, he's way more straight edge than Dom, that's what I needed in my life. Like, Kyle, like, for, for anyone who doesn't know, I don't know if he's going to be mad, but, like, he's a vegan, and, like, he... He's just more... He's smooth like hummus. He's That's what I said. He's smooth, right? And he's consistent. And um, he cuts his losses really quickly. And he's not gambly. And he's, he's more like... It's that, he's that consistent I needed in my life. Like with the girlfriend too. Or the, the friend. <laughs> <laughs> so I started talking to Kyle. And Kyle kind of became also like someone I started talking to every single day. And he taught me the right way how to short sell. Like Huddy, Gritani, Ducks, like... I couldn't learn how to short sell from them, but Kyle's really the one who taught me how to short so sell. So they short sell aggressively. All these guys are in the challenge, but this is what I love about the challenge. You find what works for you and you start trying out different strategies. Like some people say, oh, short selling penny stocks is all wrong. There's different ways to short sell penny stocks. You can short sell aggressively. You can you know, cut losses intelligently and have a lot of risk. You have some big wins, you have some big losses. You can cut losses quickly, which is what I like. Lots of small wins. Uh, sometimes you miss the big wins. You find a mix and you find what works for you and you try to adapt to the market. That's what this is all about. This is why the challenge is not just me. It's a whole group of people and it's kind of cool. You know, so Kyle helped you. So Kyle started teaching me the right way to short sell and I, and I was making- But not the, the right way for you. The right way for me. Okay, okay right, there's no right one right yeah. magic formula for everybody. Like, you know, ducks, uh, Roland, uh, Mark Crook, Gratani, like everyone's learned what works for them. You know, Good cuts his losses very quickly. Good and I are very similar where we are ultra conservative with our loss cutting. And some people aren't. There's mm -hmm. no one right way. 
but mm -hmm. Kyle's way helped you, the right way for you. Mm -hmm. Let's just clarify. Which I, I would feel like it's kind of in the middle. Um, we're like the aggressive short sellers. Um, where Huddy was aggressive back in the day, but now like he's kind of toned down like what he does. Um, but like Gratani, like Ducks, um, short sellers on Twitter, like they were very aggressive and that's what I started with, like that aggressive mindset. And that's it's why- scary. Yeah, it's scary and it, that's why uh, it just wasn't for me. And then um, like Kyle was like a good in-between where he was still conservative, but he still like kind of knew when to be a little aggressive. So it was a nice happy medium. And we got short this, this RIVX pump and this is when, um, to note, like I had split my money up from like, I wanted to start learning short selling again. Now that I had six figures, um, I, I had a shorting broker brokerage, which is different now. I had um, Cobra trading, which I still use now. And there's no overnight fees like Centerpoint. So I started learning how to swing short uh, these pumps, which was kind of one of Tim's favorite patterns. So I knew that I had to learn it. They're just like a little bit uh, difficult now because they're more liquid, less shares. Uh, less eyes. And Tim Lento does this where he holds these pumps short for days mm -hmm. or weeks and he uses interactive brokers. So there's multiple options. Mm -hmm. So, and he's at around, I think Tim Lento's at around 800,000 now. Mm -hmm. too. It's crazy. So, um, me and Kyle entered the short position in November and the short position like went against us like three, five percent a day and just kept like eating at me, like eating at me, eating at me, eating at me, eating at me. And the stock actually um, had a dump late November from like seven bucks to three bucks. I was like, it's over, like here we go, like I'm gonna cover. And then like it, it bounced all the way back to the close at seven bucks. In one day? In one day, it bounced all the way back. And I was, it's just like that emotional ride. That emotional ride was crazy because I thought I was up, like that was at the time the biggest swing I had. Like I was down like 3K, then I was up like six or 7K, and then I was back down 3K. And you like- You didn't wanna take profits? No, I wanted to hold it till zero. And there's a whole GTZ, like good till zero philosophy out there. Mm -hmm. Why is that? You, you like want that's justice? How, that's how I was taught from Tim Lento and Kyle. Like those, you just need to hold longer. And no, but, no I like singles. Don't go for home runs. That's where I, I differentiate. Um, at this point, like then it started a wave two of a repump. And this was like, this is when another health uh, condition I had. Um, I started getting really stressed out because um, I started getting like a stomach ulcer from all the stress from holding that, that thing short every single night. Like just the fear that like I was gonna get bought in at the top and yeah. lose like six, seven, 10 grand, whatever it was. And it just continued up and like I started getting a stomach ulcer and I was starting to get really stressed uh, out. And did you go see a doctor about the ulcer? Mm -hmm. They like diagnosed you with an they ulcer. They didn't diagnose me with the ulcer. They said I didn't have anything, but like from all my reading and like all everything like I experienced, like. Like it was bad, like I couldn't even eat like food and like I was in so much pain, like I was always burping, like. FYI, I say this, like short sellers like are, are kind of like lepers and they're like trolls and they should be hidden away from society so that they don't influence anybody or get anybody else sick with their disease. But also, aside from just the risks that they take, there are health repercussions, okay? Mm -hmm. Shorting these things, like it feels good when you're writing it down. Trust me, I've made millions of dollars shorting. But when you're on the wrong side, when you get squeezed, when you have big unrealized losses or big realized losses, it is stressful. Mm -hmm. And I don't want that necessarily for anybody. So how did you how did you recover from this? So I just kept holding and like, what was the worst part was, it went through Thanksgiving, it went through Christmas, it went through New Year's, like all my holidays were just like ruined by it because- You're just burping nonstop. I was just burping and just like- And like holiday dinner, you're like- oh, I couldn't excuse eat. Me, I, excuse me, excuse oh, me, excuse me. I was like, me. I literally couldn't eat. And Damn. I, I wasn't sleeping well. How many months was this? This was two months. Why did you keep trading like this? If you know, if you're like, wait a minute, my body is like malfunctioning. I had to beat it. I had to beat it. <laughs> you're too competitive for your I own good. I had to beat it and um, it got to like 11 bucks or something. And this was like, at this point down 14 grand and down 100% of my position. Understand this mentality. So I, thank you for being so honest where you're like, I have to beat it. It's like you versus the stock and the stock is winning. The stock is literally giving you an ulcer. The stock is taking your money and it becomes you versus the stock. I don't want you to get into that situation with any stock. The stock doesn't know who you are. There is no battle. It's all in your head. Mm -hmm. And, uh, like it made it easier because I, a few of my other friends were short. So it wasn't just only me, like we were all going through struggles. Uh, like me, me and Kyle were in it and 
I had the biggest size and um, like my account, my Cobra account like was up like near 40K and like I was approaching like that 25K threshold, like I was at 26, 27 grand and like I thought I was gonna go under PDT. I was like, this can't keep going. You're down 14K. So even though you've made six figures at this point, with your mindset and your whole little group of short seller lepers cheering you on because you guys are all group think and it's disgusting what short sellers do. You're down for breaking all the rules, knowing that you're breaking the rules, but you're like, I have to beat the stock. Mm -hmm. What happens? One day, does it collapse? Yeah, so when I was down, like just when I hit like 100K and it was like my breaking point, like at this point I had been in it for like over two months. It's like two and a half you're months. You're down 14K over two months. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then the stock crashes down to from like 11 to three bucks. And it's just a huge relief. Like, Was there any catalyst? No, just they just dumped it just from 11 to three bucks. And In then, one morning? Well, all day. Like it just slowly faded off all day. And I was just like, yes. <laughs> but I'm like, I'm not covering yet. And uh, then it started bouncing a little bit. And it started bouncing for like two days. And then What's like, your average? My average is 550. You're shorting it at 550, it goes up to 11. You're down more than you're, you put in. You're down over 100%. It was like 104% at the worst. Yeah. Cut your losses quickly. Learn from this guy's mistakes. Even though he's made a lot, he's made mistakes. Mm -hmm. So it's down to three. You're not thinking about covering it in the threes? Mm -mm. Why? You want good till zero. Mm -hmm. Okay? So then it starts bouncing a little bit for two days. Then I'm like, oh, they're gonna repump it. Like I gotta sit through more pain. And then just by the stroke of luck, like the SEC halted it at into the bounce and then reopened. I didn't know where it was going to reopen. Reopens what, a week later, two weeks later? Two weeks later. And I basically got to call my broker. I was like, all right, put me on 50 cents. And they're like, all right, we'll put it on there. And there was no prints. Like a print went through at a buck. I was like, oh, is this thing even going to like get me? So he's trying to buy to cover his short into the weakness. For those of you who don't know short selling, you profit when the stock goes down. Yeah, so it went on to gray sheets. So there's no level two. So I had to call on my order, put it at 50 cents. And then all of a sudden, like I just see a bunch of orders flicker through. And it's like 25, 25 cents, 25 cents, 25 cents. And I was like, did you guys get me? Did you get me? And they're like, yup, we got you all out at 25. Oh my God. So you put in a buy to cover order at 50 cents, but there's no level two, there's no bid, there's no ask. You cover at whatever the market is, which was 25 cents. Mm -hmm. How much did you make? Um, it was like 14K. So you were down 14K, you finished up 14K. Did you learn a valuable lesson? Yeah. What was a valuable lesson? Um, I was way too oversized for like, I still like, I still will short pumps, but like I, I'll do it with such a small amount where it's not gonna make me emotional. Um, and I only take bigger size now on my like day trades where it's like shorting like a first red day or like buying a dip or like overnight on a uh, first green day. Yeah. And those are the only trades I'll take big size in because it's not stressful. Because you don't want ulcers. Because I don't want ulcers. Mm. That and was not worth it. If you could go back in time and someone said, hey, you're gonna have ulcers for a few months, but you'll make 14K, would you do it? No. Correct. But at the end of the day, what doesn't kill you makes stronger. And it, it ah, may... Ah. At the end of the day, if you respect the rules, you should never be down 104% on any trade. Mm -hmm. You don't have to do that. Mm -hmm. Have you learned this yet? Oh, I won't do that again, no. Because it was so stressful. But... Uh, that's just like what the strategy, like that's what Michael Good, that's what Tim Lentil, that's what Kyle taught me. Like you get short expecting, like you put in an amount that's okay, being down 100%, you gotta make sure it's small. Like for me, I put way too much size in relative to my account. Like um, I was in too much size and it was just really affecting me. So if um, you know it's a pump, it's okay maybe to be down 100% on like, if you're, you're down, let's say you've made 100,000, and this is getting a little complicated, but let's say you've made 100,000 and you, you say, okay, this is the pump, it's gonna collapse, it's gonna go to zero. Let me short a little bit. Even if I'm down 100%, you might be down like 1,000 or 2,000, then it's not stressful. Mm -hmm. And then you'll make two or 3,000 on the way down. Mm -hmm. So you'll still participate with less stress. So there mm -hmm. is a way to do it. But again, if you're new, as you know, Jack is being very honest here, he's made nearly $2 million at this point in time. And this was just a little over a year ago and he's making some really bold choices which gave him ulcers just to paint the whole portrait here mm -hmm. so i mean that's mm -hmm. after that like 
This was November or December 2019? So like I was in the trade November and December and then I got out at the end of January and my trading in January was pretty good despite like, despite going through that, like I was still going long OTCs and like I was just taking um, a few hundred, 500 a day and it was adding up. Um, and then I made like the 14K on uh, at the end of the month and then my month finished up like 22, 23 grand and it was a great start to the year. I was out of the trade, my account was bigger and now at this point like um, maybe at like 170,000 total. And if you look at my profit chart, like RIVX was like the first perk, like in the 2020, like this, like if it was sideways, like RIVX yeah. was like the first perk. Yeah. And even though you did it in a very dangerous, in a very dangerous way. way, but, um, that was the trade that really just got my wheels turning. And then like the next month was February, 2020. And that's when like the market kind of like picked up a little bit and uh, there was a bunch of good plays and I actually, I shorted another pump, but it only lasted like a week and it was like so easy. Uh, like I was telling uh, Mariana about it, like I thought it was gonna be more challenging. Like I got short uh, UOMO and it dumped like 20 cents, made 11 grand and it was like a week and I was never even down on it. UOMO, in case you didn't realize, I actually wrote an expose on this ticker years ago for the street.com. It's a repump. Mm -hmm. And I actually uh, have a whole long story where like the promoter, I actually met the promoter and the promoter was like, you ruined the pump. And I'm like, I'm just exposing all this BS. And he was like, yeah, that's fine. Funny story. <laughs> Remember I told you the story I yeah. met the promoter? The promoter of the UOMO. Mm -hmm. That was the uh, same ticker. Okay? Yeah, so. These stocks are, you know, not even real companies. Like they're so sketchy and shady. They're just pumps. You have to treat them like pumps. They get repumped. They start spiking, they start crashing. I get it that most traders lose, but if you just look at history and you see these patterns, it's crazy. How much did you make on UOMO? 11 grand. Nice. So that was my second five figure trade. And then- um, So all the way up through like 170K, you had never made like, you know, five figure trades. You're making lots of like 1,000, 2,000, 3,000. Mm -hmm. So my only two, my only two five figure, five figure trades through 200K were UOMO and RFVX and they're both pumps. Cool. And other than that, I was just um, taking like singles every single day. And February was really good. I forgot like what tickers, I think the COVID stock started running and uh, UMO was big trade. So I finished that month up like 50K. And I was like, okay. Is your parents believing again now yet? Yeah, now that believing. you've had another 50K month? Yeah, they've, they, believe, they believe me through like the down period too, after I made 50K. What's your dad saying? Because before your dad's like, no, you're gonna lose it all, you're just getting lucky. Now you uh, have another 50K month, what's he saying? He's like, you might be onto something? He's like, you're doing really good, like you're doing really good. And I'm like, yeah, I know. And like, I always just tell him, like still to this day, like I'll tell him, like I was texting him this week. Like he even, um, like I'll get into this later, but there's, my dad will come back into the story here as of recently. Okay. Um, so I made 50K in, February and I was like, oh, this is great. Like I'm already up like 70 something thousand on the year. And I was, and I, just like last year, I was going in with expectations. Like it's going to shut off again. Like the market's going to shut off. So I was like, okay, I made my money again. So like going into it, I had a better mindset. Like I'll be okay if it's slow. Um, and then like, it wasn't slow. Like March happened and that's when like all the COVID stocks really started going like VXRT, CODX, APT, um, that entire sector, MRNA. LAKE. LAKE, yep. All those stocks started going and that was my new best month where like, uh, this is like, I started the year like short selling exponentially. Like I was doing really good shorting. So like I was shorting all the stocks when they got extended. And the other pattern that I was good at too was like, once I covered, I would like buy and sell into the bounce. So like, this is like the start of really finding out like the trader that I am. And it's the same pattern that Tim Gratani made 200 grand on. Um, and Modern Rock, same pattern. He shorted Fannie Mae and one point, made 1.4 million. There's a link that we're gonna post under this video called how to make $200,000 in one day. It doesn't happen every day, but when there's a multi-day setup with a huge amount of liquidity, that's what you know Tim Gratani made. Mm -hmm. So that's when I really started understanding that pattern and there, there wasn't any more really pumps that were going on, so I didn't have to focus on those anymore. Like I got those couple big trades out of the way and now my account, my Cobra account's growing, but I never really knew how to like uh, maximize my longs. So I just like kept 
Like from my E-Trade account, it was just like a very consistent like 500, 1,000 a day. And those kept adding up, whatever like OTC was strong that day. Like, you know, we'll either play the morning panic or yeah. the afternoon breakout or whatever. And I was just playing that uh, yeah. casually. And then shorting is really what I was focused on to like scaling up. Because like I was always interested in shorting from the beginning, as you can see. Um, so I wanted to like get good at shorting. And um, this month I did really good. Uh, in March because of all the COVID stocks and it was my new best month for like 70,000 I think and then getting into April um, getting April was a, a bad month for me I still made 50 grand because um, UAVS happened the last day of the month which was a 17k trade I'll get into that but in April like I was kind of getting like I made 22 and then I made 50 and then I made 75 or something so like, going into April like Making over a hundred thousand in like two or three months is pretty mm -hmm. crazy. So going into April, which like, was yeah. all of your previous year. Mm -hmm. So I was already up like my previous year. So going into April, like I was still scaling up, and like this is where my trading started to slip. And last year too, like I had a bad April. I, I don't know what it is. Like April is my birthday month, and like I don't know what it is, but like I don't really trade good around my birthday. I don't trade good when I move. Like if there's other distractions in your life, like just don't trade. My birthday month too. I, did mm -hmm. you know I'm April 15th? April 15th, I'm the 23rd. We're both from Connecticut, yeah. we both have glasses. There's a good chance that Jack was designed genetically from future Tim Sykes, sent back in the past to be my newest millionaire student to help teach you the process. No. I'd say there's a 13% chance of that. I mean, I believe it just because... Like, I'm I, kidding. It, it just feels so... Like, just like the connection or like the similarities that like both me and Tim have. That's why like when he was saying at the conference, like there's going to be a few of you that can do it. Like I already knew it was going to be me just because like I just, like I was just, I just looked at Tim and I was like, this guy, like, like I didn't like, I don't know what it was, but I was just like, like it's similar to me. And like, I love the, love the game and like whatever. And it just worked Let for me. Let me just reinforce this. At my conference every year, I try to be as realistic as possible with the expectation. I don't say like there were like 500 people in the room. I'm not like every single one of you is going to be a millionaire. I say most of you will not make it. Okay. Industry stats. Most people lose. There's probably only going to be one or two or three. I didn't know how many, you know, it turned out to be like a dozen people who became like six figure students from that conference. I don't know who's going to take this stuff seriously. You hear Jack's story. I don't know who's willing to go through the ups and the downs and the mental grinds. You know, if you, if you start losing a lot, especially what if you get started and you don't make any money and you're like, I'm so dedicated to your studying and you're not making money. Maybe it's just a, a slow market, right? And then you're judging your own potential because of the slow market. Like there's a lot of moving pieces here. And like I say, this is a marathon, not a sprint, even though Jack is kind of screwing up my marathon, not a sprint story by like really excelling in, in year three. But mm -hmm. okay. So you start slipping in April. How much did you make or lose? So... I was taking some bigger losses. Like I was losing a couple grand on a trade, like three. And up to that point, like I was doing super good on my losses. Like first three months didn't really like take too many big losses at all. And then in April, like I just felt like my, I was burning out a little bit just cause I've been going so hard for it's the first- slippery slope. Yeah. So I kind of took a step back and I recognized like what was happening. Um, I was down, I, I got lucky. Like I was down um, on a, a couple short, I got squeezed a couple times and I was down maybe like 5K and it came back, got out break even which I knew that that was not good because I've done that before and like it's a slippery slope. So I, I was like, I got to back off. I got to, I got to reset. I got to, um, just take a step back. And I zoned back in towards the end of the month. And I think one month in April, like I was doing pretty, pretty good, but like one, one week in April, I only made like a few thousand cause I was taking bigger losses, but I was still staying green. Um, Actually, I only had two red weeks this year in September, which I'll get into, but like I was staying green for the most of the time and uh, getting towards the end of the month, I had a big trade on UAVS. Um, so I ended up making 50,000 on the, on the month and moving on to May, I was like, okay, I got out of that month. Like, like I'm blessed for getting out of that month. Like, like I did. <laughs> um, it was kind of just a stroke of luck with UAVS. I got short around four bucks. It, it halted gap down to one buck. It was my new best trade for 17 K and then came May and May was, May was hot for OTCs. I remember I'm not, I don't really remember what tickers were running, yep. but it was a hot, OT whereas like the beginning of the year felt like a lot of listed stocks where we're trading the, the COVID runners. Um, in May, it was a lot of OTCs. 
I, I don't know why I'm drawing a blank on some of the, the tickers, but May ended up being a really good month for me. I think my average loss in May was $200, and I ended up making like 70K. And you can look at all of his trades below, by the way, too. Mm-hmm. Did you do a trade review too for the month? I did a trade review on. We'll May. link the trade review so yeah. that you can see every single trade. My mind is totally blank. Like this year, like too many tickers, too many students, too many opportunities. I you if you ask me what tickers did I trade in May? Zero idea. Mm-hmm. So then getting into June, June was um, June was my my next level. Like okay, I'm making I'm making 20k, I'm making 50k, I'm making 75k. Like I'm making whatever. And then in June some opportunities came and I really like in May I did so well that I was like okay I'm ready I'm ready to take this to the next level in June and in June um, the first trade was GNUS which was my new biggest trade which was a a Nasdaq runner ran from like a buck to like 10 bucks Um, supernova up to 11 actually 11 bucks I got came all the way back down too I got short around like 1050 and it crashed to five bucks I covered my shares I think I made like 30k on the short. Um, it was my new biggest trade. Then I went long at five bucks, sold it at seven, and then I shorted the balance for like a grand or two. And I ended up making like 44.5k in the day, and it was just like an eye opener because I made that money. Like, like basically, that was almost like a month's like a month's salary uh, in just one trade. And I was like, both Whoa. UAVS and GNUS at that point. These are supernovas following my seven step framework. Jack is trading the four crash shorting, the five dip buy, the six second repump, kind of dead pump bounce reshort. Mm-hmm. So it's you get the big spike, you get the big crash, and you get the bounce. I mean, it's it's happening. And I remember June specifically because June I actually made over three hundred thousand dollars, or roughly three hundred thousand dollars for the month, which was my biggest month ever. Um, Cydy followed GNUS and UAVS, mm-hmm. so. That so, was the biggest one. Like going into CYDY, like June thirtieth to be specific. Mm-hmm. I kind of, which was again the last day of the month. I kind of, like I would say I had a little bit of a vendetta against this stock <laughs> just because it started trading in December at like thirty cents, and like I was trading it all throughout it, and it was choppy. Like this stock was like choppy, and then eventually it started going, and there was this stock was heavily bashed on Twitter by like so many people, and it just started going, and it just went on. The best, the best run I have seen, it went from like three bucks to like 10 bucks and held green to red every day and was like a seven day, multi-day green run, like extending itself more and more each day. And I should mention, mm-hmm. I have a vendetta against CYDY too because it had a perfect first green day breakout, I believe in the ones to the threes um, when the New York Post featured them. They had like some coronavirus potential treatment. The New York Post wrote an article about them, hyping them up on a Friday. It closed perfectly on a Friday. And I don't know what I was doing. I was, you know, I wasn't traveling, but I, I just totally did not see that first green day OTC close. And I remember looking at the chart over the weekend and I was like, how could you miss this? Like Jack and I talk often like OTCs, you know, Perfect closes on Friday often lead to awesome opens on Monday. Mm-hmm. And CYDY had that. You can go back into the chart somewhere in May or June from the ones, and it gapped up to like the twos or the threes. It was like a, a 50 or 60% gap up on that Monday on the back of that New York Post article. And, then, and I missed yeah. it. I missed it! And then it went parabolic to three bucks at the open. <laughs> so it was just like, that was incredible. And that's what like really got the stock in my attention. attention. And then it consolidated for like two to two to three months. And then like, that's really what, it trapped a lot of shorts, I think, in that time where a lot of people were bashing it. Um, I know a lot of shorts that were like, oh, it's, they don't have any revenues. Like it, it's worth a billion dollars. Like they don't have anything. And then that's when it started the short squeeze from three bucks to 10. And then going into it, um, I was shorting, I started shorting it maybe like the fourth or fifth green day. And I started getting like chopped around and um, on a Friday, uh, I was kind of tired and the stock just kept like faking out and I kept getting in and the fills were tough and I ended up taking my first five figure loss of 10 grand on it because I mean, that's kind of what I was planning for if things went like, su- like I was, I was planning to lose like two, three, four, five K like, but if things went really wrong. I knew I could lose like up to 10 K because I was trying to short um, like 15 to 20,000 shares at around like five, six bucks. Um, and at this point I had made, um, 
I don't know, I'm probably at like three, four hundred thousand, and I'm trying to, like, this is my biggest position ever. So I'm getting myself to that next level in size, and it just, it faked me out like so many times. I got caught, and uh, I cut it, and I basically I lost like 10 grand on the day after all the commissions and the ECN fees and the tries. And then it was good that Friday, like, I took a big reset, and I just, like, I looked at the chart, I made a plan, like, I remember just writing things out, like, I'm gonna be patient, I'm gonna wait, like, I'm going to, like, just be very patient. The next day, um, I think the Monday, it didn't, it didn't die, like, but I stayed away from it. So like I learned from Friday not to like be aggressive on it yet. And then going into Tuesday, which was the last day, June 30th, um, that was the day it crashed. And I ended up getting like a, I ended up getting a near perfect entry near the top around 10 bucks. But then if you look at the chart, like it held and it came back to 10 bucks. And I was down like three or four K and I was like, I can't do this again. And I just, I cut it and it was stuffed at 10 bucks. And at this point, like, I'm like, I gotta give up. I gotta give up. And then it started going sideways and it started failing. And I was just like, oh my God, I can't reshort it one more time. And I, I ended up, I reshorted it and I got like 15,000 shares from like 10 bucks. And- So you're putting in half your account, roughly. Mm-hmm. What gave you that confidence where you're like, I don't want to do it, but it pulled you in? Because it, it was too perfect of a setup. It was too perfect of a setup. I knew I had to. I knew I, I knew I had to keep my head in the game. So Jack shorted it. Um, Gratani, there's actually a fantastic webinar. This is Gratani's biggest $300,000 day on June 30th. Um, if you're a challenge student, you can go back. You have access to Gratani's webinars. Click the link below to apply to my challenge. Watch Tim Gratani's webinar on June 30th, 2020. Have you watched it? I was there, yeah. But have you watched the webinar? I know no, you were there. No, I, the I watched the webinar after the close. Oh, okay, so you were there live. Yeah, I was there so live. So it's archived. This is the beauty of the challenge. We archive all the webinars. But specifically, he was getting chopped around. He calls them paper cuts, and he was losing 10K, 20K, 10K, 20K. And then, you know, he made like 200 grand on like that short. Yeah. Because... I said this, you know, I'm not a short seller and I was watching it. I probably should have been a short seller. I said, watch no other stock other than CYDY because it fit the supernova pattern perfectly and it crashed so beautifully from 10 down to five-ish. I actually dip bought it in the low fives and I was like, oh, this is going to be perfect. And literally it bounced a little bit and then it crashed below five. And I had the, for me as a dip buyer, I had the choice. I said, you know, either cut losses quickly because I'm down. I thought that it would bounce, it didn't, or double up. And I sometimes double up when I feel, yeah, I start to feel the bottom. It's not an exact bottom. And with CYDY, I doubled up in the high fours, which turned out to be the exact bottom. And then I sold it, you know, when I made like nearly 30K, that was my biggest trade in a while. Um, and I sold it in the fives also, and it went to like, it bounced what, to like eight. eight. <laughs> so I, I, I nailed the bottom in a very messy way, sold way too soon. Coulda, woulda, shoulda been a 100K day for me. What did you do with your short at 10? Um, I ended up covering, like there was a couple of fake turns on the way down, and like I just, I lost sight of, like I was just so happy that I was crashing, like I was just covering my shares on the you way down. You lost sight of the big picture. Mm -hmm. So I ended up making like, I ended up making maybe like 35, 37K on the crash after like I made back my 5K loss. So I probably made like 40 grand on it. I had 15K shares from around the not mid nines. So what would that be? Like three bucks a share roughly. Yeah, three bucks a share. So I covered in the sixes and it went to the low fours. So yeah. I, I left like a dollar and a half on the table, but that's okay because yeah. I was gearing up for the dip buy. And I also went long, I think, I went long like 20,000 shares at five. And uh, it bounced and I was just selling on the way up. And I, I ended up, I sold it way too soon. Um, I sold it at like 550. Like it was terrible when yeah. it bounces to eight. I mean, I had I had 20, I made it a little bit longer than you. I had 20,000 shares from the low fives and I think I made 17K on it. So almost, I almost sold it near six. So like uh, low fives to high fives, 17 grand on the dip buy. And then at that point, um, I was up like, I was up like 50, maybe a little bit more. And then uh, it started bouncing and then I missed like the next dip and then the, the, the spike, but that's okay. Like if I got the same setup again, I knew I know I'd do so much better. Um, but then I got short into the bounce around the, the mid to high sevens. Ooh, it's good. And then um, I think I got sh like, I think I, I took too much size on this trade. I'm pretty sure I had like um, 25,000 shares from seven, which was just way too, like <laughs> way too much size. And um, 
Like, I don't know why I went that big on the bounce, but like, I went. That's a number six from my yeah. framework. And which is usually the worst part of the pattern because it's the most choppiest and it's not the most clean and not the quickest, but. That's when you went the biggest. Yeah, I went the biggest. But which... now you're richer. You're already making like 50, 60K on the day. So maybe that gave you more confidence. Yeah, yeah I guess it gave me more confidence. So like, and I knew what a huge cushion. I knew like, okay, this thing, like, what's the odds? Like it goes all the way back. Like I, I, I was, I was ready to risk like all my profits to like potentially make like a uh, double. Yeah. Um, so I took that position and then like it kept going to the $8 range and I was probably down like 10, 15 K and, uh, and then it started failing. And just because I was down on it a little bit and I was just burnt out from the day, like you guys have to understand, like I was trading this thing for so long and like, that's why I didn't trade it perfect because I got chopped up on the way, the way up. So I was just burnt out. Uh, I started covering way too early. Uh, I think I, I made, I ended up covering like for a dollar a share. So from like the mid to high sevens or the mid sevens to like the mid sixes and it ended up going to like five or, or five fifty. So I, I left another dollar share on the table, but I ended up locking in another 25 K, which brought my daily total to 75 grand on the day, on the day, 75 K in one day, which mm -hmm. was more than your previous months, which was almost as much as your entire previous year. How did that feel? It felt amazing. Um, but I knew I could have done better. <laughs> so we always want more. Yeah. And I made nearly 30 K on the day and I totally missed out on so many opportunities. I could have done better too. So, That's the day that Grittani also made nearly 300,000. He could not have done better. He took the most. Yeah. He, he, his cover was, he knew he was like, Oh, fake turn here. And I, I was covering into that. Oh, fake turn mm -hmm. here. And then he got out. Of but five. Michael Good, I think also made 75,000. Mark Crook, I think made 45,000. Matt Monaco made like 20. Kyle, I think made like, 30 or 20. 40, yeah, 30 or 40. I don't know. It, that, that's the thing. Like, you're waiting for these perfect setups, and whether you like going long or you like going short, whether you like buying the breakouts or shorting, like, you wait for these kinds of perfect setups. And all of us have our own little, you know, favorite patterns, and some people are better than others. Some people have different position sizes, but there's so much opportunity, long and short, if you wait for these great supernovas, like GNUS, UAVS, uh, CYDY, um, MVIS was another one from earlier this year that had a perfect, you know, supernova where you could short and dip by and like, these are the opportunities you wait for. Yeah. These, these are the best opportunities for sure. And like I was saying, like in March, like when I was trading those, that was like my first real, like I've traded them before, but that was like me really trying to maximize the potential on them, like trying to go short and long. So I've been just working on that throughout the year. Um, so to end June, it was like 184 grand. And that, that like blew me away. I was like, I'm, I'm, I got it, man. Let's go. Did you call your parents? Um, yeah. I was like, and this was, that was also what made me cross over or no, 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 no. I crossed over 500,000 on the GNUS day. Okay. And then I was closing in on 600,000, uh, after CYDY. Yeah. So yeah, I called them and they're, they're blown away. And like, I was blown away by that because that was like my first like really big trade. Um, like 40, 45 K is cool. But like the thing about like 75 grand, like I understand like that's literally like a salary, like in one trade. And it was structured. This is what everyone has to understand. Everyone gets blown away by the numbers, but like it's structured. Like we, we were just reminiscing. We we're replaying that crash and bounce. And then the second bounce, like in our heads, like we can envision it because we've seen so many of these. So like, it sounds crazy. Like, Oh, 70,000 in a day, like on penny stocks, it sounds like a scam. But like when you have these patterns, and they are more or less the same when they are going full supernova. And they only happen a few times a year. You can play these patterns. You can go back in time. You can go watch the video lessons. I encourage you to watch that Tim Grittani webinar like five times. These are the plays that really add to your account if you're prepared. If you're unprepared, if you're always like, oh, I want to make 75K in a day, but you don't put in all the time and the studying and the effort that this guy has, you won't be prepared. Yeah, so if you think about it, like if I made 50K on June US and 75K on CYDY, that's like 125 grand. And then the 50K is just like those, those singles that I take throughout the day, like one, two K on like these, like I said, the OTC longs that I've never really sized up on, but then to get into that. So then I was sizing up on my shorts and um, next month. Were you thinking about taking any of your money out at this point? Or were you like, this is getting crazy? Okay, so at this point, um, at this point I got into, I wanna buy something phase. Um, I was looking into a car. I was looking into buying a house. I actually put an offer on a house because um, I wanted to get into real estate, but it really started stressing me out. Like in July, in July, I made 125 grand the next month. 
I don't really, I don't remember like what I was trading because I was so stressed out about the house. But you did a monthly recap. I did a monthly recap. That would be like, I don't this remember This is why the we do recaps. This is good. Mm-hmm. But you were stressed out from the house? From the house, Which yeah. you didn't even get? Which I didn't even get. You only put in an offer? I put in an offer, yeah. Um, I think I put in an offer for like 200, like 200 grand or something. It was like a little house. I thought I could live in it and then sell it for more. <laughs> so I was thinking I was going to do that, but it didn't go through. And I'm, I'm glad it didn't go through because I'm glad that I'm now here um, in New Hampshire next to my girlfriend, just being closer. Um, so that's really good for me. Like the house would have been stressful. Yeah. So I'm glad I didn't go through. And with the car thing, um, we actually drove, like me and my dad drove out. I was looking at a Nissan 350Z for like 30K. And I was like, dad, I got to buy something. Like I just made 75 grand. And we drove out there and it ended up being like the wrong place. And I was just like, you know what? I'm done with this. Like, this is just too much. Like I'm done back to trading. (laughs) So. He's a purist. That's the beautiful thing. Don't just get into trading for the money. This guy is unique. My story is unique, Tim. Most people lose money. I don't want you to ever lose sight of that. I don't want you to ever lose sight of that. Okay, like mm-hmm. people watching this, like I want to make seventy-five k in a day. It's through years of struggle. It's through years of practice and being in the right place at the right time. No different than how I was in the right place at the right time back in ninety-nine and two thousand, and I wasn't even fully prepared. But when you have these supernovas and you recognize the basic patterns, it's there. So I'm glad that you saw that. I'm sorry. I'm glad you capitalized. I'm glad you weren't distracted by the car or the house. What happened then? July. Like I said, like July was the stressful month with the car and the house. I, I don't, I'm trying to remember what tickers I traded. Doesn't matter. We have the recap. We'll post the okay. recap. Yeah. Underneath. July, July stressful. You house still month. made 125k. At this point, mm-hmm. everything's speeding up. There's so many plays. Part of the reason why he doesn't understand like all this is because I don't even know. I, I remember June 30th, clear as day. But there's so many tickers. Like we're talking 10, 20, 30 movers of 50% or more every single day. By the end of the week, you and I are exhausted Mm, because we're taking these small singles. Every now and then we're taking like a supernova. And it's just like we recognize that there's opportunity, but it's, it's overwhelming. So like that's why I'm so glad that you were so detailed in the struggles. And then when it gets overwhelming, like, yeah, 125K on the month, book it. Like, mm-hmm. what, what about August? Okay, August, I remember better. So August, um, August, I got a good reset where I went on a vacation with my family um, and Mariana came too for a little bit and um, we were in Cape Cod and that was just really nice. But my, my attic self couldn't get away from the screens. I, I traded the, I traded the first, this was good though. I traded the first 30 minutes to an, the hour every morning. Um, and there were some good OTCs, uh, RVVTF, I think was one, um, that's the Sweden stock. Yeah. Um, that one was running at that time and I, I just took some small trades on it every morning and I ended up making like, uh, CLSK was running, I ended up making like a couple grand a day and I made like 10K in the week just trading one hour. Have you and seen what CLSK is at now? Do you know it's in the 30s? <laughs> how crazy is that? How crazy that it was an OTC pump back in the day and right? we were shorting it at like a dollar. Right. And it went- what's, what's CLSK at? Hold on. I have to do this. So we're filming this in December. So this is a few months later. What did your What did your family and, and Mariana think when you're in Cape Cod and you're like going to trade? Um, honestly, I just didn't want anyone to ask me questions. <laughs> I, just, I put my headphones on and I was just like, everyone just like leave me alone. Like, my bad. CLSK is at 18. I was thinking about something else. Oh, I was thinking about Neo and IO. Yeah, and IO was crazy. I'm overwhelmed too. So. I was, I had a good month. I was starting up, I was doing good. And then, um, not Neo. I'm thinking about BLNK. I'm not crazy. You BLNK. Know what B- yeah. Just, is you it, know what BLNK is at? Like 40 bucks. BLNK is the one that went to there. I was like, come on. I, I'm not one to like hype these stocks. BLNK is at 36. And I was trading that when it was what? Six, seven, mm-hmm. eight. We were trading that, that stocks in my video on HER when I, that stock was running when HER was and I, in last May. May 2018, it was BLNK was at like two bucks and I was shorting it and like, I don't know, everything's just crazy. And like you learn like over these years, like you really like through all the ups and the downs, like you really start understanding just like the game at just a different level. And I don't even know, like, we don't even know how to explain it. I can just like explain my experiences and my traits, but that's part of it. Your journey is is how you like get there. Like it's step by step. 
trade by trade, week by week, month by month. It's good to do like the monthly recaps. Like I appreciate you doing that. Yeah, even though most people don't understand what you're talking about, but it's good even just for you to put everything in perspective and like look at it. Like no, no different than how you were preparing for the conference where you looked at all your recent trades, right? Mm -hmm. And that was obviously much smaller profits, much different time. But you were in Cape Cod for all of August or just mm. some of August? Uh, it was like a couple of weeks. So that was like the first couple of weeks. And then How I got back. How good is the lobster there? Did you have the lobster? Of course, you had the oh, lobster. Oh um, I want some lobster. Mariana, it was her first time trying it. Can we and get like, lobster here? Do they have probably it? Probably not. We have no Uber Eats. I just want lobster. We're going to get some. Like sh Mariana doesn't like eat look a lot of food. Look it up. Let's go look up some, some <laughs> lobster. Yo, let's do like a whole New England like clam bake, like lobster, corn. Just in the movie. Clam there. chowder, yo, lobster yo, bisque. Get some chowder. Even if we have to go pick it up, obviously no Uber Eats. Sorry, I love food. This is what I do. I'm thinking about Cape Cod. Growing up in Connecticut, I went up to Cape Cod with my family, had lobsters. Love it, it was a there. great time. I wanna, re, I wanna redo this right now with my new family. So, yeah, we were in Cape Cod and then um, my big trade in August, was that was LCDX. We're gonna talk about LCDX in the next video. Stick around.